uh, wet your voice. Because <laughs> you're going to be talking for quite a bit. Okay. Welcome everyone on YouTube to another review. The very first review of the year, to be fair. But it was completed mainly throughout 2023. We have been absolutely bombarded with review work to do. We're in the current process of doing... Uh, another review avatar which I'm hoping to get done over the weekend and then we are going to start the Robocop review uh, hopefully next week if we can get avatar done uh, Willie Mays is is joining me throughout this review itself we actually played the entire game from start to finish together it was his recommendation uh, I am a Monster Hunter fan I have played the majority of the Monster Hunter games so this definitely tickled our testicles in a way and we definitely wanted to give it a go so we're going to do a review breakdown in the exact same method that we always do but we've also got Willie chiming in and also sharing his input too so hello Willie hello I appreciate you my dude so we'll break down exactly what we usually do the the game itself size wise is it's an 80 gig game so it's definitely a beefy beefy game to install peggy 12 we we played it both together on the xbox side and the consoles that this game are is available for is xbox playstation and windows the dev and publishers are keo tecmo and ea so the, the game kind of gave us the instant vibes, as I said before, of Monster Hunter, but it also had a really cool crafting aspect in the game that they that, that I feel like they kind of borrowed from Breath of the Wild. So a combination of those two games is, what, is where I'm at with it. Um, but the very first thing that we will both talk about is choice of music used because as my regulars know i love music i love soundtrack in video games and they can make or break games just by being either good or bad if you've got a shitty soundtrack playing on a good game it ruins the experience in my opinion and vice versa so willie what did you feel about the soundtrack used in wild hearts i did like the music uh, a lot i do feel though one thing that I didn't like was during a lot of the fights, the music was pretty much the same throughout. I uh, didn't really have a whole lot of variety. I agree. That's something we spoke about, I think, twice during the playthroughs. Uh, we both clocked around 70 hours in this game, and a lot of the variant, along a lot of the variation of monsters, all carry the exact same soundtrack, which. It after a while it gets stuck in your head in an annoying way because it's the same song over and over and over and over again on a short loop, and I I feel Especially when you're doing fights back to back to back <laughs> <laughs> exactly so I I do feel that it, it could have been made a lot better by maybe giving each monster its own soundtrack so then the ver the variety and the variation will will always be different depending on which hunt you're on. I think that would fix the problem immediately. Just give each monster its own song. There's also the uh, like out of battle music would sometimes come in and then it would fade out. <laughs> like there, there wasn't a persistent background song song from the. No, I agree. While we were traveling around, the amp the, there was no ambient music for us ambient, to listen to, and yeah. no, I agree, hundred percent. So, would you say that it? ruins the whole experience of the game or it just it started to get a bit tedious it got it got tedious yeah uh, i wouldn't say it ruins it because obviously if there was no music that would have been way worse <laughs> i agree it would be so, boring as fuck <laughs> so i'll give give the credit that yes there was some epic music going on while the battles were, were happening so you know i'll give the give it that it just it got repetitive is all did you have it breaking on you at any point in time? Because I didn't. I had no points where the audio was either skipping or whether it was actually completely bugged where no music was playing during certain fights. It never cut out. It's just like when we first load into an area, it would take like five minutes for the background ambient music to actually start start up right. after we were leaving the bases. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did you find? How did you find the voice acting in the game? Great. Uh, 
all the characters had their own personalities. Uh, we had the one that was so not entirely certain if it's a he or she or <laughs> other. Uh, but I, I think that was the idea, though. Um, but yeah, the, all the characters, they all they represented, you know, the area that they were supposed to be in, which is kind of like a fantasy Japanese type area. And yeah, I think it was well represented for the voice acting. I thought the voice acting was on point. I felt it carried emotion when it needed to during the emotional scenes of the game because it does have that impact in the game. And it, you could tell that the characters were very uwu-y, very Japanese um, with, with, with their explosive behavior um, and their cutesy, you know, emotions throughout the game itself. So you could definitely feel that throughout the game. Um, but I do feel that they were... The voices all fit the characters very, very, very well. There were no voices that were out of place where it, it didn't fit the character. Um, but some of their reactions during certain parts of the game did feel a little bit eh, because the drama was going on and it just it's just like you're standing there talking about bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> when we should be over there dealing with that problem, but you're standing there talking about bullshit. <laughs> but I can't really complain about the voice acting. I thought it, I thought it fit really, really, really well, and it did, it did a good enough job for me to not really sit there and, and worry about it. The next category that we look at after audio is the graphics, the texturing, and the weather effects. Now. When we look at this part, we don't deduct points just because the graphics don't look, you know, um, absolutely amazing. It's not about because a retro game can still look absolutely fantastic. It's, it's about whether or not the graphic engine that they used in the game is actually working correctly and runs efficiently. The game offers you the ability to trigger a performance mode and quality mode. And this is something that I absolutely love in video games because some people like myself, I would rather have frames per second over quality, where there might be some people out there that want the game to look absolutely pretty as hell, like on their 4K TV in Ultra HD, but at a reduced frame rate. Now, we both tested what the game ran like in quality mode, and we both encountered the same problem, that the game just wasn't rendering right, and the frames were plummeting massively during a lot of the game so we had to both switch to frames per second wasn't that right mm -hmm. yeah i was gonna say that was for me uh, with the combat and how fast it was moving the frames were definitely a priority over the quality of the, the graphics <laughs> even in even in performance i felt like the, the overall quality of the, the graphics were great I agree. Obviously, when you're standing there in quality mode, yeah, everything looked beautiful as hell. But when you got into a fight scene, everything <laughs> kind of went downhill fast. Yep. And it, so. I, I aim with frame drop issues. I didn't, uh, as far as in performance mode, I didn't really notice any frame droppers on my end, but. That's fine. I've, it could just be me, but I didn't. I didn't personally see any, any issues when we were playing in performance. Okay, I I did get quite a bit of it on my end. I did. Even we even running on the Xbox Series X, I would expect little to none. But during a lot of the scenes when I was running around um, the monsters itself, I could definitely see that it was slowing down and it couldn't keep up what, with what was going on in the game. And I think that's just because there's just so much in the game at the at once that's all being rendered. And as you said, even in frames per second mode, this game is breathtaking to look at. It is absolutely stunning. And we encountered a lot of areas that were just photographic perfect. They were so beautiful. And the colors that emit from the game, including the monster coloring as well, is by far the one of the best things about this game. I uh, like oh, all the different creatures and all the animals, all that, the color aspects of it. Uh, I thought it did very well with all the different monsters and color combinations. I didn't 
there wasn't anything that I looked at that, you know, that was, you know, that didn't work. Okay, so you saw no screen tearing, no missing textures. I saw a couple of floating plants. <laughs> I did see a couple of floating plants. I only once, and I was only because the, the, the lighting happened to have like a perfect straight line in the grass. I saw one area where there was a block of, of grass, essentially. Like, it was supposed to be smoothed out hillside, but it was, it was a perfect right angle square. <laughs> No. I, only, I only saw that once, and was, like I said, the only reason why I noticed it was because there was a snowy area, and the light reflected on one corner just perfect. That was a perfect squared air edge. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> we we also did notice that during the weather elements part of this game, because the this game has full on proper proper um, seasonal weathering. We we encountered snow and a shitload of rain. In some areas, the rain looked fine, but in other areas, the rain made the game look fucking terrible. <laughs> really? It reminded me of an old CRT TV that had the background snow going on. <laughs> it, it, it made us both laugh because we were standing there at one point just looking around and I was like, this is, this is bad. It looked great in other areas, but that one specific zone um, before we we fought that monster, it just looked like white lines coming down and it looked absolutely awful. It looked like static, almost. Yeah. <laughs> and it was bad. <laughs> so that could, I don't know if that's something that they could patch because that's something within the graphic engine that they're using. But over, overall, other than with me having my frame drop issues on some of the fights that we were doing and some of the areas that we were doing, I was happy with how the game looked. It looked absolutely stunning. Character model designs, glitches and bugs. This includes the enemies as well, the, mon the monsters as well. I think every single monster that we encountered, they all looked unique. They looked, they all looked absolutely beautiful. Their designs were very 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 on point and if again if you played monster hunter you kind of understand the aspect that you're going into you kind of get what you're getting yourself involved with but they made sure that every beast that you fought or every monster that you fought or um looked unique acted unique uh fought differently as well and they do have variances within the game itself, variations of those enemies, and I thought that was also a very, very clever idea, which had their own looks again, and their own variations of attacks. But what did you feel overall about every single monster that we fought from start to finish? Uh, like you said, with even with the upgraded versions of the, the variants, they, they acted differently, but they all acted independently. Uh, they never had the, they had similar attacks, obviously, but at the same time, like the, the lava back, for instance, uh, uh, between the regular and the cobalt, had two completely separate types of attacks. And then when they upgraded, they were much more aggressive and mm. and all that. Do you feel there was enough monsters, or do you feel that the game could have done a bit better with a few more monster hunter has a huge range of monsters in its own game i did i haven't sat back to actually count exactly how many monsters were in this but overall i felt the game could have added just a few more monsters just so the repetition wasn't always there i agree to a point only because the, like you said with monster hunter they have you know dozens upon dozens yeah uh i feel that that might be a little overly ambitious only because of how much you have to grind already to get the material to craft certain yep. armors and, and weapons uh, that's something we it, would definitely at, talk about in a minute <laughs> at, adding more monsters to that would have just prolonged how much more of a grind it would have been okay that's fair okay gameplay and mechanics uh now this is one that I I'll take over on because Willie, if again if I remember right, you haven't you don't like Monster Hunter and you haven't really played those games that much because you just find them too much of a grind fest. But that was the overall feel to it. Uh, yet you were very 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 happy to play this, which you know you explain why why were you happier to play Wild Hearts, but just you're not interested in jumping into a Monster Hunter game. 
So from from my experience in Monster Hunter, just the way that it's set up with the multiplayer aspect where in this game we could go everywhere together rather than we could just pick certain fights and that's what we're going to do. In this we can have a free roam together if we want to and yes there's the missions that we did a lot of but Monster Hunter just for some reason it just didn't do it for me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's fine. I see um, it, Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> I found... No. I, the, with the Monster Hunter games that I've played, I found them to be extremely time-consuming and extremely grindy. The monsters take, f on average, far longer to actually either capture or to kill. Um, the grinding aspect uh, of Monster Hunter is absolutely awful. And you could end up spending a whole day capturing or killing a monster over and over and over again and still not get the item um, that you're trying to achieve. And their stories are just a little bit... Ugh. To be fair, they are. They're a little bit. Uh, they're, 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 they're very boring, and I felt differently with Wild Hearts. I found with Wild, Wild Hearts, the monsters were killable faster. We, we, I think we eventually got one, one, one or two of the hunts down to like two minutes, two and a half minutes to kill a monster. We just ran in and nuked the poor bugger. And <laughs> we felt guilty as fuck <laughs> okay. of, because of how quickly we were able to down them. But you couldn't really do something like that in Monster Hunter. You, you couldn't. They're all programmed to flee multiple, multiple times during the fight. Um, and they take such a long time to knock or capture. It got really, really tedious. Um, but in terms of the gameplay mechanic, from my my aspect because i have the experience on the games itself it plays extremely similar to monster hunter 85 90 percent of the way itself you can't actually capture the monsters in this game compared to where monster hunter actually allow you to do that so you can farm certain materials that you couldn't farm if you actually killed the beast while out in battle and i i'm actually fine with that i'm actually completely fine with not having to capture the monsters i'm just slaying them i'm i'm cool with um but you can break parts off the monsters again another feature that they clearly took away from monster hunter um there are bases that you can travel to and you can create more bases by setting up camps and within those camps you can build a lot of extra features that can help your 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 way of playing uh, uh the cooking in the game is very very in-depth uh, there's a lot that you can do and that's something that I kind of actually slid to Willie's side because he <laughs> he kind of took over as the as the chef but I was absolutely thrilled with the amount of crafting that we could do with the amount of resources that we could find uh which can which which, which we could then utilize it within cooking within the farming aspect as well uh, the base creations, I was absolutely happy with. But it, like I said, if you are familiar with Monster Hunter, you know exactly what you're going to get yourself into. But just bear in mind, it's got loads of crafting aspects in it. Even during battle, you can craft units that can really, really change the entire tide of the fight. You could be losing really badly and then craft a massive gigantic cannon just to blow the shit out of the monster and that's again something that willy completely like succeeded in over me i was just happy boinking him with a hammer every now and again <laughs> while willy was over there with a fucking fortnite blueprint crafting massive gigantic cannons to fucking blow the bastards up so what did you what overall what did you feel about the whole in battle crafting um with the with with your, the, the arm gadget i keep forgetting its name um karakuri karakuri yeah what did you think about the whole crafting aspect of the game i loved it uh, um i know it's a little different because with, with you having the bow the whole game there's not a lot of like the, even just the little blocks that you can do you can obviously there's the jumping off and shooting and stuff like that but with all the different weapons there's different attacks that you can implement with those little ones and then even using the cannon using the hammer 
all the all the different offensive ones and then you got the the defensive um, constructions too like the wall and the the traps and all that uh, i i like the way that it's that you can implement that on the fly um, and as far as i can tell most of the um, fusion um, traps worked on most enemies except for the firework didn't really work on anything on land it had to be something flying um, yeah they all definitely had their own counter which you had to yeah. you had to, you, the game actually aided us with that though because i thought that would be something that we would have to figure out ourselves but during the battle you'd hear like a, a water droplet effect and then on screen prompts where if you execute the button prompts correctly you would create a counter dragon um karakuri um weapon to use against them and it was highly effective every single time Uh, the the water droplet was i believe was when we were unlocking it for the first time and i only learned how to i figured that part out but if you look at the the tree you have it's got the symbol of a certain monster and then you have to look at what pieces you need to have going into that fight and that's what like with the the uh, cannon at the very end I yeah. was able to unlock that because I happen to have those two pieces that I don't normally carry with me. Yeah, I know. I, I you helped I me figure that one out. I did, that's the part I didn't like because you have your six basic uh, character, but you can only use four at any given time. Yes. So if you happen to be going into a fight with where that would potentially unlock a new fusion but you don't have the two pieces that are involved, you can't unlock it during that fight. And that part, I, I didn't care for. No, if I... They're I gonna give us, if they're going to give us all six, they should have given us six buttons to use. Obviously, there's only the four A, B, Y, X, but you could have done either the trigger, the bumper, something that would have let us use all six at the same time without having to swap mid-flight. That's a fair shout. That, that is that is fair. Do you think they could have allowed you to learn the the um, dragon Karakuri and then after let you know that, you know, to further use this, you'll need to switch out this and this and this. So at least you still get to use it once and experiment with it once against the monster. But then after that point, if you want to use it going forward, you'd have to switch the, the ones out that you needed. I, well, it's like, uh, for instance, like the, the last one we were doing, you're asking me if we could use that claw trap. Well, because I didn't have the uh, the spring thing, I couldn't make the trap. Yeah. So I would have preferred that they would have had to some way to implement the other two basic at the same time. No, that it makes sense. Whether different button press or something of that nature. No, that's that's fair. Because that. Like I had to like for that fight, I could I had sacrificed sacrificed the the claw trap in order to use the the cannon. And we need we did need the claw trap as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, any game customization and stats building. The game starts off as does Monster Hunter to allow you to create your um, hunter from scratch, male and female. How did you find the customization options at the very beginning of the game for the character? Did you feel that it, they were they were lacking, or it was just right? It was just right. Uh, obviously, you went into it way more in depth than I did. Um, What's up, Vinny? I, I don't go when I when I make a character. Generally, I don't put that much time and, and thought into it just because I want to get into the game. There is plenty, in my opinion, of options to to customize you can go you know top to bottom and and all the different features of your your person yeah i well he's right i i i can get lost in character customizing very 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 easily and i did play around with quite a bit of it i was i was happy with what you could do within the actual game itself the game shares the same sort of armor system that monster hunter utilizes so with every beast that you fight it comes with its own armor sets and weapon tiers as well 
and you you can pretty much go very 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 nuts around the customization in the game um you can mix armor sets and find the perfect set for you because with all the armor sets they all carry their own stats um and also their own abilities built in as well so if you're going uh for example i i, I'm a, I was a bowman uh, Willy went crazy with the weapons that you could use in the game. I believe he went through absolutely every single I one of them. them all. <laughs> so I tested them all at the home base to get a feel of them and, and to kind of find the right one for me. Willy didn't do that. He took the weapon of choice straight out to battle, even if he was brand spanking new with it. And he <laughs> he didn't care. He bopped anything for a challenge. <laughs> he bopped around the uh, the mod. So, so it, it was fun to watch him do that because there is uh, there are a good variety of weapons in the game. Even something as simple there, there's an umbrella in the game with blades around the the, the umbrella. And he went around smacking enemies with that as well. Um, he didn't care. So out of all the weapons that you utilized, what was your favorite and why? My favorite is actually just the, the basic katana that you start with. Um, I I enjoyed all of them, like the big sword that has the charge up ability. The claw blade is fun because you get to fly around uh, once you stick it into an enemy. Uh, I didn't care for the maul just because of how slow it was. It does a lot of damage, but with how fast the enemies move, I didn't feel it was that great of an option. Okay. Um, but everything else, everything else was a lot of fun to use the bow could have definitely have used a few more abilities it had it didn't have enough it, it really 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 didn't and it's and it's a shame because i do have so much fun playing as a bowman but it is it's tricky to use especially if you want to land all those high hits what was your highest hit again 1200 on a me, on a on a melee weapon yep the the big no the key yeah, the big knife. I couldn't get anywhere near that. <laughs> As a bowman, that was, I couldn't do that. I couldn't. The hammer might have, but I never played with it past the first, like, like our first session. Yeah, I tested the the hammer on the bear and just did not like the slowness. I I, I like to be able to move around and I like to be a, as fast as I possibly can be, but the, a lot of those weapons were just not right for me, so I went with what went well for me and you found a nice comfy home with quite a few of the weapons and freely switched um dependent on which one you, actually you kind of switched depending on who we were fighting to get the best feel mm -hmm. which was a great way so, to play it at the end there i had two katanas i had the fire and a wind one and then the claw blade was my water weapon those were the, the three that i ended up using yeah at the end of the game okay uh, the game difficulty, did you at any point in time find the game too hard? Just the one fight with Amaratsu, the first time we fought her. Only because the it was tight quarters, yeah, the big bird. Um, <laughs> I, th I think it was mostly our fault, though, because we were pushing the sword too far, too fast. Yes. Just because we hadn't taken the time to grind up our, our weapons and armor. Yeah. I agree. Oh. We we did kind of speed through um, a lot of the beginning part of the story, and when we got to the first key main boss, she destroyed the shit out of us so she many times. <laughs> it didn't matter 100%. what strategy we implemented or how we approached it. Every single time we zipped down to the where the fight was, which was a pretty small arena, it wasn't that big. The bird absolutely wrecked us over and over again. So we we, we stopped and we chit-chatted and we said, all right, what we're going to do, we're going to do the side quests and we're going to do a little bit of grinding. We upped our armor. We upped our weapons. We went back in there and we then destroyed her. Um, so again, that's exactly what you would expect in any type of Monster Hunter game. When you're overwhelmed, just grind and you will eventually tear yourself up to be able to withstand uh the impact of the hits because she hit hard her swooping attacks were deadly and that's something that carried throughout the whole game after that point because a lot of the high tier monsters that we were fighting the alphas and the volatiles they they one-shotted us a lot <laughs> 
the game's no joke in the higher tier levels. And luckily, if you are playing with a friend, you will see the struggle that sometimes happens when you're when you're up against these high tier red star bosses, and they're one shotting you all the time. It's ridiculous. So grinding is the key because that's how you get through your weapon tree, and that's also how you end up unlocking the higher tier higher tier armor sets because you're fighting the higher tier monsters and you're rewarded by their armor set but in a higher variation which is pretty cool story if applicable we don't spoil story not at all but uh, and luckily enough we actually did the ending of the story offline and and i'm happy with that because i didn't want to reveal the monster that we fought online because that is the spoiler for sure but were you satisfied with the story were you lost at any time was it easy to follow what's your thoughts i thought the story was very easy to follow uh it does have an in-depth story of what's going on uh i do enjoy did enjoy this the entire story start to finish uh, never had any like problems of where it progressed uh i was a little disappointed that the one the first real big boss that we fought there was nothing similar to that and that's the the giant one we never fought anything that big ever again yeah <laughs> it was a one-off thing wasn't it really and, yeah. it, it, and it was a it was a cool fight we both agreed though after a while because the game asked us to do it quite a lot it got boring fast because it was the yeah. same thing over and over again but throughout the entire roster of monsters there was only one of its kind only one and you're right i think if they would have added one or two maybe giant giant you know uh ancient monsters and stuff like that it it would have been quite cool to do because monster hunter do do that they do they do the high massive massive tier mountain monsters uh, that you climb on run on and, and run through and they're f they're always fun to play um but i agree as well with the story i we were able to follow the story all the way through at the very very end there's a little bit of a uh, a video that you huh? watch and a bit of a <laughs> yeah it, that's the response at the end of it you're like wait huh um so there's a lot of i don't know not um speculation that you could throw at the game at what maybe happened at the end because it doesn't give you a cut and dry answer it it leaves you thinking like willie just said huh <laughs> like what <laughs> um online co-op modes features and stability we played the game together online throughout the whole game the one disappointing fact that and we both agreed on this is that the very last boss that you do in the game it disconnects your online mode and forces you to play on your own and and you agreed you, you said it dude it was a stupid move by the game i did not understand that at all like you they let us play literally every aspect up to that point only to have us break apart and finish the game solo for the last 15 minutes yeah yeah, it made no sense. It, they should have just kept it co-op. It would have been a better fight to enjoy with a friend. And it, it really kind of put a damper on the ending. It did. And that's, that was my only real low point because of that. Because as we you know had done the whole thing together up to that point, luckily we both did finish the fight and you know finish the game individually. But there was a point there that I thought I was going to lose my side. Right. and then what you have to sit there and wait for me to finish it <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly it i'm just like take your time yeah. my dude <laughs> I think I, i'm thinking you finished it like two minutes before i did three minutes before i did about that yeah so i i muted myself because i had a cutscene going on and i didn't want to interrupt you while you're doing your solo fight um yeah that's, that part of it i don't understand nor agree with no okay uh during the co-op stability do you, uh i saw no tethering i saw no rubber banding i we didn't get disconnected from each other's lobby once and no. uh, bear in mind guys we played this game for 70 plus hours we had no disconnections 
no issues online. Did you see anything from your point of any tethering no, or rubber banding? And that's always that's always an issue that we look at anytime we play together because obviously you're on the other side of the ocean from me. Yep. Um, and any kind of you know ping issues, lag issues. Um, Apex is a perfect example where you know no matter what, one of us is going to be hindered. I being on that you were hosting the whole time. I never once had any lag issues or any um, any ping issues like during a, a fight with a. Uh, an animal or a monster i never had the issue of am i going to hit this is it going to hit me that's true so. even the monsters weren't affected by our connection at all no, no. god that was i mean there's a couple times where i don't think it should have hit me but i think it was just <laughs> just the way the game is set up where <laughs> it's got proximity aoe yeah not so much where it hit and where i was so okay yeah, i did not feel that was uh, an issue at all Purchase price, digital price, and value of content. Now, let me. I've still got the Xbox loaded up right now. The this this is something that does get put in the review because did the content match the price tag? And a lot there are a lot of games out there that you play that could end up being a couple of hours, and you burnt sixty quid, 70, 70 bucks, and it's just a massive, massive, massive ripoff. Um, so if I quickly check the store, and this is going based off. The basic version of the game. I found this, the uh, base game for £70. The Karakuri edition, which was which is basically like the deluxe version, was £90. So for me, £70, you would be close to about 85 bucks. And the uh, so it's 69 as well. Oh okay. I, I got it up right now. So the original price was 69.99 lovely and what's the karakuri edition on your on your side 89.99 so same price okay that's oh my god my god they, they didn't draw. okay do you feel there is value for content in this game 100 percent. i agree i can't say anything it, other than that i agree 100 percent. I, I will say when this game first could was announced and released i wanted to buy it but i could not justify spending 70 dollars on a game that i wasn't sure if i was going to like it or not yeah so it landing and on I, game pass just, was a blessing <laughs> right uh i will say that that's only a, a personal issue just because i don't like spending money no and that's fine <laughs> the way games are nowadays at 70 dollars yeah it, it's <laughs> it's a chore to open the wallet and say yeah i'm going to buy this today yeah so I, if I had known at the time that I would have had this much fun with it, yes, 100%, I would have bought it day one. So well, I'm actually going to switch the scene uh, because right now on Xbox, it's actually $27.99. It's, it's actually massively yep. discounted. Um, and you guys can see it right there. Is it is the base game for you also discounted? Same. Yep. Oh, it is? Nice. Yep. Um, we're also going to look quick, very, very, very quickly at the microtransactions or the add-ons. They are selling the Karakuri upgrade. So if you bought the base game, you can actually buy the uh, Digital Deluxe uh, separately if you then choose to. Um, but they don't... I mean, this is something that actually Capcom do in Monster Hunter. They sell hairstyles. They sell, they sell clothing and all that shit. They didn't do that for this game. They didn't. There is, there are no stupid heavy microtransactions within this game itself. Uh, and I can't see any. I literally went down through and all I could see was the standard edition upgrade to push you into the digital version and that was it. Um, and I have to give them props for that. I do. I have to. Um, but this is where we look at anything that i've written down now willie willie didn't take notes I, I i again i don't think he expected any of this to happen to be fair um but it's just to add on to what we've already talked about and add just a little bit extra on top um i was happy with the collectibles that you could actually find throughout the game there were two types there were uh little tiny little balls i, I don't know what their name is i completely forgot we, we just called Tukomo. them sorry Tukomo. there you go I called them testicles just because I'm immature. Uh, but 
throughout every single area that you could go to there were 50 balls to collect uh, which only aid you in single player. If you're playing on your own, you'll have one of those balls following you around um, and they can heal you, they can cure you, they can attack and taunt the boss to try and help you your survival rate. So if you are playing on your own, you won't necessarily be 100% alone. You'll just have a funny little ball that follows you around helping you out. And I think they could have done better with it just being a ball. Because in Monster Hunter, you actually have a pet companion that follows you around. It's not a ball. <laughs> and it looks really weird when you sit at the campfire and it's expanding and then shrinks and expands. It's, it's so weird. But it's not something to really moan and complain about. It's just my finicky thing. It would have been nice to have a proper, proper companion running around like an animal. I thought that, that, that would have been really, really cool because you actually can, in this game, you can befriend animals. You can go up to them and stroke them and pet them and they drop additional items that you wouldn't have been able to get previously. If you slay them, you might end up getting meat, for example, but if you befriend them, they may drop a shard um, which could be a cooking ingredient or something that you can use to make armor sets with and I thought that was a really 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 cool aspect in the game and then I thought what if you could actually befriend those pets and actually have those pets as companions throughout the game what do you think I wanted the bunny rabbit <laughs> there you go <laughs> nah, I, I agree though. I, any any one of the, the smaller animals that would have it would have been awesome to have yeah uh, even uh, you can, to a point, have it as a pet, the fox, but you have to keep it penned up. It can't go with you. Mm. You can have it in a cage uh, at, at your base, which it then, uh, after a certain point of time, it drops an item because it's it's technically like your, your pet now. But yeah. um, I would have preferred, like you said, to have have some some form of followers other than just the the balls. Yeah. I, I, we, we both agreed that we kind of found the majority of all the NPCs in the game useless because they all celebrated about all the victories that they had, yet you and I were the only people doing anything. <laughs> they did nothing. <laughs> they did nothing at all. And yet in some of the cutscenes, they were cheering themselves. <laughs> it's just like, we stood there and we're like, why are you saying we, 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 when it was us that did all the work and you sat there and did nothing? <laughs> Except for what's his name, who would occasionally be out there with us, but show up after the fight's over because <coughs> he was too busy drinking sake. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the game offers you the ability to re redesign your looks and change your name with an ornament that's actually create crafted in-game, but that only serves um the host offline so you can only use it you can't allow uh any of your friends to use it they'll have to create their own in the game itself which i'm fine with to be fair it's it's you know some games don't give you any chance of recustomizing your character once you're done you're done but this game obviously gives you that chance which i think is pretty really cool um, there were quick jo join portals. We didn't know what they were at first because we were always running around together and the portals aren't activated when you're playing co-op. And when you're running around on your own, they're all activated. And I was like, what the hell are those portals that are scattered around? And that's so you can actually quick join other players who might be in the region and quick join their games. And I thought that was a really, really cool addition to the game. The crafting of, of, of ornaments was a nice little touch, just another way of decorating your character. They didn't offer any real benefits other than cosmetic. Maybe having them as a stat boosting thing would have been nice. Um, because there's a lot of stats in this game and a lot and a lot of abilities that you can that you can roll with. And I guess it would have actually made them more useful having them as stat ornaments instead of only just cosmetic. But that's just my take on that aspect. Um, would you agree or did you like them purely as cosmetic only? I would have liked to have some sort of stat boosters on them that, that were given a little bit extra, but... Yeah, not complain too much about it. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we also found that the small... Um, some of the small animals, the materials were not actually named on the big map. So when you actually open up your big map, you can cycle through what you'd want highlighted. It would highlight, obviously, where the big kimonos were. It would highlight where the small 
ones are, but any of the actual creatures and any of the actual mining stuff, none of that actually gets labeled on the map. And it does get labeled when you play Monster Hunter. And I found that to be just a stupid idea of them not naming what those are. If you discover something like a mine of, of, of rocks that you needed to find, it should mark it on the map so you knew where they always were so you can go farm them. But that's my take. Yours? I think I'm, I'm willing to bet that it was something that they left off at the end. That just seems like a oversight that they forgot to polish up. Okay, so you think a because, simple patch could fix that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I did notice, though, like uh, right there at the end, we were looking for those demon rocks. Mm -hmm. The same rocks, they changed their name depending on what chapter we're on. Yes. Uh we discussed this, I think, two or three streams back that as we progressed through the story and went from like a tier one stage to a tier two, the same items that you were farming in tier one were altered in tier two and tier three. So you were, gr you were grinding the same shit. It's just it was a higher version of that material that we were, gr we were grinding. Um, that's pretty much everything I've written down. So is there anything that you want to add before you tell us what you think? score wise uh, i think we i think we covered pretty much everything okay i can think of so i don't write notes down so <laughs> if there was anything i would have forgotten it by now because i have a very short term memory so <laughs> there's that <laughs> if you was to score this game out of 10 where would you comfortably fit i would put it personally at an 8.5. The fuck is it saying the same thing? <laughs> I agree. Were you really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was between 8 and 9, and, the, you know... The, and that's, I was going to give it a 9, but at the same time... The music was getting really does, tedious, yeah, and the grinding. The, the little things. Yeah, it is the little ah. things. Um, they should... I mean, to fix the grinding, it's pretty just simple. Just, just give the player more loot when they kill a monster. Right. And uh, that's instead it. Instead of just one. It's just, yeah. it is, it is. You, you, it... Minimum of two. <laughs> if, if you're going to make me have four or five to, to crap something, don't make me do that box <laughs> five times at least. It, that's it. Because there's a chance you might not even get it. Because then if you don't get it all, then you have to do it another time for nothing. It, it's it's what they completely ripped off on Monster Hunter. And, it won, and it's my biggest complaint about Monster Hunter is that you fight an enemy for about half an hour and you get ones on a lot of the items. And sometimes you don't even get the item you need. You don't get it at all. Yeah. And that's a piss take. When the monster's in front of you and you can see the item on the monster that you need and you can't take it. It's like... Wow, <laughs> it's right there. It really is, and I think that the give me the option to carve it off the monster after it's dead. Like, <laughs> well, the, you, you get you get your choice of one of three items that you didn't like automatically get. Just give me that option. Yeah, it's it, it is the it. I was gonna say a nine, but because of how grindy this game gets to, bec it, it becomes, um, and the music with the repetition as well, which were oh, my only two real complaints of the game, I couldn't give it the nine, but I didn't want to go down to a plain eight because I think that's just a bit much. So I was actually, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think eight point five out of ten is a healthy, good enough score. Would you give this game a high recommendation to go out and buy now? Um, especially that it's on sale or play it off yes. of game? Yeah? I agree. If you got Game Pass, uh, uh, 900%, but even at $27, it's more than worth it. Yeah. I would, I would, if I had, if I didn't care about money whatsoever, I would have been happy to pay the £70 for the game uh, because of how much time we've sunk into it and because of the enjoyment factor in it. With it being discounted right now down to 27, 28 pound, that is a steal. A hundred percent steal, especially if you're a big fan of Monster Hunter. But as it is on Game Pass's subscription service, because it's a part of EA's pass as well. If you vibe this game at all, now is the time to play it if you haven't got anything else on your plate. So with that from me, 
I yeah, 8.5 out of 10. High recommendation to play this game, even if you play it on Game Pass for a bit and if you fall in love with it, buy the game. At least you've got it on your account because games don't always last on Game Pass. They re they remove games all the time. So if you've got it for $27.99, you've still technically got gotten a massive bargain out of the game. Um, but final words from, from you, Willie? I got nothing. All right. <laughs> I, I appreciate the I appreciate including me in it. Uh, this is my first <laughs> official review, so I had fun playing it with you. Dude, it has been a played it with me. It has been a massive, massive fucking pleasure to have you included in this review. I always want to try and to bring you guys into these reviews. I've had Muzi a few times and we've chit chit chatted away um for hours we really have so i just want to say thank you so much for being a part of the review thank you for recommending the game in the first place because it was your recommendation that got this review started and i i have had a massive a massive blast playing this i'm not done with the game for sure at some point in the future i am more than happy to if you want to send me a message and say let's go hunt something i am 100 percent down to do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, I want to get all the achievements for this. Two, I want to get the rest of the, the stuff unlocked on the bottom of our armor sets and weapon sets. So, yeah, definitely yeah, not done. <laughs> all right. Well, so to end this recording, again, a massive thank you to every single one of you guys that supported me. I don't know how I'm going to um, cut this video off on YouTube because we are live streaming to two platforms we're streaming uh, solely on uh, uh kick but restreaming the feed straight to youtube so this video is automatically going to be saved it's just it's got a two to three hour mess around of us killing monsters at the beginning of it so i don't know if i'm going to cut this bit out of the end and then upload it separately i'll get to that when i get to that um but again a massive thank you to everyone that watched the review uh who supported me throughout the review it's been a massive one 72 hours is a huge amount of time uh and i will see you guys in the next review leave leave all your comments down in youtube because i do respond to you all give it a like if you enjoyed it uh, let me know what you thought and i'll see you in the next review Take care, guys. Oh, I am. De I definitely have to cut it out. I think because <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't want someone to watch a four-hour video just to get to the review section. <laughs>